Hey there techies, welcome to another review and today we're going to be taking a look at the much anticipated, according to you guys commenting, Sophos Home Free Antivirus. So, Sophos has always provided security to the enterprise solutions but really didn't pay much attention to the home users until now. Recently they have now opened up their demographic to home users and came out with, well, what else but Sophos Home. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Uh, so far their web page is kind of going through here. What is it going to provide? Well, not much. It's going to be just a basic antivirus. You get malware protection right here, some web filtering, and then a simple setup. Okay, well we'll see how simple it is, right? So let's click our old get started button right here because yes, it is free. Now the first thing you'll notice is there is no button to download right away. You have to create an account. Now, this is necessary to use Sophos Home. There's no way around this, so don't bother trying to like go to a, a, a torrent or something like that, or try to find a free copy online because there's just no need. Uh, it's just not going to function without having uh, function properly, I should say, without you creating a user account, and you'll see that here in just a couple minutes. So, to save some time here, I've already created a user account. So let's flip that old window around there. Type in my credentials. and log in to the servers. So once we're logged in, you will see that there you'll be presented with the dashboard. Uh, this is a very clean interface so far from what I have to, uh, from what I've seen. And uh, essentially it is gonna work, it's going to be where you install Sophos antivirus. So as you can see, there's a big green button right here that says install. Uh, if you don't know what to do, you can get started and it'll bring you some help. But in this case, well, quite frankly, I know what I'm doing. So we're gonna go ahead and install this right away. So we're going to click on the install button. As you can see, it is downloading right now. Uh, the installation file is not that big. Uh, this is a downloader. Spoiler alert. Uh, I have put this on my computer or at least my virtual machine just to kind of pre-screen it just because of the way that Sophos has set this all up. It's not going to be uh, the traditional uh, antivirus where you have your GUI right in your computer and everything is controlled through the client. Uh, you control Sophos actually through this web portal right here. So we'll get into that, like I said, in a little bit. But first of all, let's complete the installation. Uh, so far, as everything is pretty simple and straightforward to click install. And as you can see, it's already installing. Not much to it, guys. That was, wasn't even any options asking where do I want to install it. It's just saying, hey, we're going to put this on your computer and we're going to put it where we want to put it. So with that said, I would like an option of at least where to install the program. Uh, maybe even a button that's really, really small from the corner that says, you know, a little checkbox, uh, custom installation, or something of that sort. I understand you're really trying to go for the kind of novice user, and that's great. But keep in mind the advanced users too, especially with having a web portal uh, such as this. Uh, you're going to attract a lot of advanced users by doing that, and, and a lot of other AV companies are going to uh, this myth, this method of control or management, I should say. All right, everyone. So as you can see, the installation has completed here successfully, and we'll go ahead and click finish now. So keep in mind, it will automatically populate within the dashboard here your security statistics via which computer you install it on, or regardless, or I should say, whatever computer you installed it on. Um, but as you can see right down here, it is running, and the, it says update in progress. So let's go ahead and open up the interface here. I, it is still doing stuff in the background, so it might take a little while, but uh, it shouldn't take too long here, hopefully. You know, but that's the famous last words of when you ever say something like that. Uh oh. All right, so let's click on yes then. And as you can see, it is populated in the web portal there. And then here's the interface. So, right off the bat, what do I think about the interface? Well, if I minimize this to get rid of that so you don't get confused with that, what am I. Thoughts. Well, I'd have to say it's very clean. Uh, overall, very clean, very well set up. Everything is in front of you that you would need to see the status of. Uh, you got your automatic virus protection right there, web protection, and potential unwanted programs, in a sense, uh, right down here. Uh, scan button is located right here, home dashboard button up there. About pretty much everything you'd need is, uh, right, like I said, right in front of you. Now, if you do notice in this interface, there's no options at all. Nothing. You click on Sophos, it just 
brings you to their website um, or the log on screen and uh, home dashboard is going to do the same thing it's going to bring you to the log on screen so you can log on so you can kind of get the theme here what's going on if we click up here you can see that's just for your uh, title bar right there and then think oh right click that'll get you more options no 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 you get an update about update now button that's pretty much it and then a uh, open Sophos home right there so there is no way to manage the security just with the client version installed you have to manage it through the web portal uh, which like I said is nice if you're actually putting this on a system of somebody who doesn't know what they're doing or somebody who doesn't care what they're doing because then you know for sure they can't fiddle around with it and do anything because it's just not built into the program's capabilities to do something like that anyways so with that said, let's talk about now the dashboard and how I like that. So, so far you can see that we have our PC right here. Now you do see these threats right here and you do see websites blocked. Like I stated earlier, I did test this out earlier and uh, kind of played around with it a little bit. So you're going to see things in here a little bit change and I'll tell you the stuff that I did change uh, versus the stuff that's default. So right here, right off the bat, uh, you have the options to disable and enable your web protection as well as automatic virus protection and so on. Uh, down here is where your alerts will be displayed as well as I believe up here or somewhere, they, they, somewhere else in the interface they do alert you. Uh, right down here we have our web category access. So this is your web protection module. You can adjust these categories uh, as you see fit in the sense of which categories are going to be blocked versus which ones are allowed or to warn the user they're about to enter this specific category. Uh, so I did block uh, hacking and then adult as well as peer-to-peer. -peer. Now you're probably wondering, well, peer-to-peer, -peer, how is that bad? Well, for those of you who don't know, peer-to-peer -peer is th things like, uh, for instance, if I scroll down here, the Pirate Bay, and that's uh, torrent websites is the best way, the best example I can give of peer-to-peer -peer downloads. And those typically can have malware embedded in them, if not be just malicious themselves. So that's why I just said, hey, block them. I set this virtual machine up pretty much the way I would set up uh, any sort of client's PC that didn't necessarily know what they were doing in hello command prompt I guess you're gonna just pop up anyways don't know if that's related to Sophos or a Windows 10 thing uh, but anyways that was very interesting so I've never seen that on this virtual machine before guys and this is a fresh virtual machine nothing has been done to it it's been reset like it has been every single time so that uh, could be something related to Sophos Anyways, we're going to then continue on. Right down here, like I said, device events. Uh, you can see it's been reprotected a couple times. There is, and the reason for that is because I was trying to figure out if there's a way to get rid of the log here. And from what I understand, there is no way to get rid of it. It's pretty much stuck on here as is pretty much this is tied to the PC. Now, there is a button right here that will will remove the PC from my device list, but as for the information that goes along with it, it appears it just stays with it forever, which is kind of unfortunate. I'd like the ability to at least reset everything back to the default and clear it out uh, just to get that fresh blank slate uh, in the event of something just you know wasn't going the way it was supposed to in my mind or, or something wasn't working and I didn't know what happened, I could then just revert back to default settings. So Sophos, if you're listening, that would be a nice option just somewhere in the interface here is uh, restore default settings or uh, clean interface or something of that sort to just reset everything back to the way it was from the factory. Uh, then, so that's pretty much it for the, the category within here. Very easy to use, uh, even the settings area for the devices, very, very well laid out and very well defined of which each option does and the functionality behind those options. So kudos to uh, Sophos for providing a very nice, very easy to understand interface. Obviously there's help and support up here. You can go to the forums or you can get help via the manual. Uh, once again, dashboard, we check that out. My account, not much in there. You can just change your email or change your password. What else do you really need? It's not much. So that's uh, pretty much gonna be the interface, I think, guys. There's not much in the way there. Let's go ahead and close this out here. And then uh, we will close this out as well we're going to go then check the system usage or system resources uh, that are being consumed by Sophos itself so let's take a look here and see what we got so we do have what appears to be quite a few processes here as you can see we have all of these right here uh, for sure which are all related to Sophos now you know how I do not like to see 
multiple processes in a sense of those will degrade the performance of your PC more than just one larger uh, process that's taking up larger amounts of memory. Now granted you can see they all do have different functionalities. Uh, let's see what this one is. That service filter. Okay this is a filtering service uh, and then this is a uh, don't know exactly what that one is but you can see it is definitely a different uh, executable. So for web intelligence. So I think that's their uh, cloud portion of the web filter so that's going to reference the cloud if I'm if I'm correct and this one is just uh, responsible for referencing your uh, personal blacklist I did miss that in the interface though I'll go back and check that in just a minute so that as you can see right here then you do have all of these separate CPU cycles that are now being related to all of those processes so that's why I don't like having all those processes there I'd rather much see it be condensed down into one process but I understand the method of uh, the their their methodology of thinking here in a sense of uh, where they need to have all these uh, different processes so we will see maybe it won't you know impact impact the system as much as i think but i've just noticed in the past that typically when they have this set up that it tends to infect or not infect affect there we go the system a little bit more overall wise ram usage not that bad so i'm going to say that right up the bat not that bad for ram usage uh, it appears to be under yes it is definitely under 100 megabytes so that's that's perfectly fine to see right there so let's go back to our um, web portal here our web interface and check out what uh, how you would actually put a website in there's what i'm trying to say or exclude a website so just bear with me here one more minute well, I log in again. Okay. So uh, once we're logged in, we're going to go ahead and go to the device that we want, which is right here, and then scroll down. And as you can see down here, we have the ability uh, to exclude, or they call it exceptions, but exclude certain areas of the system as well as certain websites right here. You can exclude and then obviously applications. Now, from what I understand, you cannot, and let's try it right here. Now this is, I can see that it says exclusions already and that, that means just excluded. Now you cannot block a website, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, I really wish you could manually either block files or applications or websites and not just exceptions. I kind of think that that's a, that's a downfall that should be built into the software. Um, something very easy to build into it. If you can make exceptions, you should be able to block. It's the same thing pretty much. So I really, really like to see that they add that. Uh, so that is that then. I've already rebooted the system. So because it got hung up during the user account controls, um, that's why you noticed the video got paused. But anyways, so I restarted the system already. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to start the new video here. And we are going to go ahead and go into the prevention test. So we're going to see how well Sophos can protect home users. We know they do a pretty good job, at least from what I've read online and seen in tests uh, of that sort. They do a pretty good job at protecting enterprises. But do they do that good at protecting home users? Stay tuned. Watch uh, the prevention test and you will find out. Oh yes, uh, some bonus content right here, guys. I do not believe that Sophos incorporates any sort of behavioral detection with their product here, which is very unfortunate to see. Uh, I do believe that they just have signature-based detection. And as you all know, that is just not good enough for nowadays. Uh, with all the dynamic threats that are out there, it's just you need a lot more in the way of protection on your system. So that's all I wanted to say uh, is I do not have any hips or any sort of other behavioral engines incorporated into this system.